everyone. I'm Arfin, and this is Dona. So we are here, I want to share a bit about Tech Saturdays and what we do and also our project uh, in DIY Bio. So Tech Saturday is a meetup. We have it every Saturday. Uh, what we do is that we um, want to spread the purposeful making culture. So everything that we do, everything that we make, we want to link it to sustainability. Could be environmental sustainability, social, or even uh, monetary as well. One also collaboration. So what we do is it's a public program. So if you want to join us, it's just open for you. We we meet every Saturday at the other UWC, UWC East. <laughs> yeah. And what we want to do also to share our learnings. So today also is a means for us to share what we have learned, our mistakes, and how we can then move on after this. Right. So this is what we do usually. So we open up a project to public, can sign up, and we learn how to make stuff, and then we make the things, and you know, obviously it is not done, later we'll talk about it. And then we share about what we have learned. And um, every week we have our updates in this uh, Facebook group, so you can check out the Maker Circle. We have updates every week on our project. Right, so today we are going to share a few, two things. Number one is the incubator. The next one is a magnetic stirrer, right? For incubator, well, it's a device that, that is used to grow and maintain microbiological cultures, cell cultures. So we have, a, we have a space in our lab that's still empty, and we want to make it into a DIY bio lab. And you know, we have microscope and stuff like that, but that's all we have. <laughs> yeah. So we want to start everything from scratch. We want to build our own incubator. So yes, we need an incubator because there's a lot of uh, you know, biological things that re requires uh, temperature to be constant for it to be maximum, to, for it to, um, uh, to, to, for example, enzyme reaction, DNA interaction, and the stale state. For example, you want to grow bacteria, you want it to be about 37 degrees Celsius, 40 degrees Celsius, so that it can grow um, the best. So to, to build our uh, incubator, we first check out online, you know, and we realized that there's this uh, online course on, on, on DIY Bio by the WAG or WAG societies. It's Bio Biohack Academy. So they run this uh, from Netherlands, but they have centers in some part of the world, like uh, China, I think China have uh, Tokyo, Korea, and they run it. And we thought, hey, this is good. We can try to get some of their designs and make it ourselves as well. So for incubator, this is what they have. We, we get inspiration from here and we just modify it according to what we have. For example, for the, okay, for the cabinet itself, some size consideration is the size of the Petri dish. So you want a, a box that's big enough to put in about 9 cm diameter Petri dishes. And at the same time, so you don't need too big because for ourselves, our lab is, is quite small. It's about 3 by 3, by three uh, room space. So we don't want the incubator to be too big as well. And then for material, we just get whatever we have in our lab. Um, so three, uh, three quarter inch wood sheet. It's quite thick because we want the insulation. Yeah. Uh, the acrylic sheet is used for the, for the window at the front with the door. And we also have aluminum sheet to make it look more shiny. <laughs> so for the heat source, we were thinking what to use. Right? We have a few heat source that we can find around, lying around our lab, you know. We have the soldering iron that we can hack and take the, the heating element. We have the uh, hair dryer. And so we have the, this is a heating element from coffee maker. And we decided that, okay, let's just use that, you know? <laughs> so coffee saves the day once more. Uh, for temperature control, we use the Arduino as the, as the brain, all right? And we use relay to turn on and off the, heat, the heating element. <laughs> Uh, and that two button is just to, to change the target temperature. So we can change it 40, 35. 
So we, we put on everything, we put it inside, and it worked, right? So as you, if you see here, this is the temperature inside, 43 right now, degrees Celsius. But it's not hot enough for, uh, what we want to try uh, what is the maximum we can try. So we, we want to do rapid prototyping. What we did is just insulating it by using tape. So we use tape and insulate everything around, and we managed to get into 60. So right now, the, the challenge for us is to insulate it with things other than tape. <laughs> All right, so uh, our plan after this is we, we are going to, this is the freezing uh, schematics that we make. We want to share it in uh, Instructables when it's done. So if you are interested, you know, can check out our instructable soon. Right, the next thing uh, we want to share, or don't know to share, is the DIY magnetic stirrer. So, great. Donna. Um, this doesn't actually Yeah, it's okay. Sure it is. Okay, so for the incubator, um, if you want a demo of it, we will show it after this talk because it might take a little bit of time right now. Um, yeah, so moving on to the magnetic stirrer. So basically, this little device here, is uh, what we made to basically you know, stir liquids. Uh, ideally, it would have a heat pad as well because this will help with chemical reactions uh, and whatnot. So, yeah, so it's a laboratory device. It employs a rotating magnetic field. So over here, actually, you can't see it yet, but inside there are two magnets. And over here, this stir bar, which is now in two, which is usually one uh, would be spinning around when the fan inside rotates. So this will cause this to spin, liquid ends up spinning, and uh, we've got uh, a method to control the speed as well. So this little DIY uh, experiment of ours turned out quite well. So just to share a little bit about the process, we wanted to... Uh, it's important to actually control the speed of... Uh, your spin. Uh, this will depend on your different experiments. So what we did was that we used a singleton potentiometer. Uh, we used it as a rheostat. You know, these are just uh, it's one of the ways you use a potentiometer. I guess most of you would uh, understand this. Um, yeah. So we wanted to use we wanted to adjust current flow, which will help with controlling the fan speed. And initially, the fan that we wanted to use was uh, a salvaged. It was salvaged from a CPU. Uh, we were very excited about using something salvaged. <laughs> very cool. Unfortunately, uh, it had an IC in it, which meant that uh, you know we found out by actually uh, experimenting. We wanted to turn it around, positive and negative. Uh, only in a certain direction it worked. The other way it didn't work. So then we realized that um, our circuit wasn't working because having the IC meant that we could not use a potentiometer with it. So we went to Simlim Towers and got ourselves a more simplified DC. Uh, no integrated circuits. Uh, we also got ourselves a high voltage battery, 12 volt, very cool, uh, on-off switch. And our circuit worked after that. Really simple setup. So once we got a circuit working, we basically went about building this little box. And you'd be surprised how difficult it is to build this box um, with precision. So this is, you know, how many makers does it take to make one box? Apparently quite a few. Uh, so this is uh, some people from the team uh, that were helping out. And uh, yeah, so over here uh, on the bottom left, you can see we were actually in a car park because there was a talk going on at the time in the lab. So it was a bit noisy. So we actually moved the jigsaw out just to, to the car park and uh, continued our work, because work never stops. So, yeah, so after that we built this uh, little box, and over here you can see a very simple, uh, basically what's inside, because I can't open it up right now. Uh, everything connected really well, uh, and we added a little light as well, so that when you turn it on, it's pretty obvious. So now, let's see. Uh, yeah, so we are, I don't know if you can see this, but basically right now, the battery has died. So <laughs> this is great. <laughs> so 
okay, okay. No, I didn't. Okay. Oh, good. So we changed the battery. Um, can you see this? Um, yeah, I think. It's not working. That was a much better. Yeah. But we might have to change the battery again. We can study that. Yeah, you can see it sometimes. Uh, so, uh, you know, with a liquid in it, uh, basically, uh, it just spins. It's a really easy setup. And the beauty of this is that you'll be surprised how many things in the bio lab you can just make yourself. Um, you know, Wax with Society, what Arvin was talking about, it's, uh, it's got all the instructions you need. And uh, if you want to join us, come down on Saturdays. Uh, yeah, we're there from what, 9 to? 9 to N. To, <laughs> depending on the project, 12 or 10 p.m. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, uh, please. Anything?